Good morning, really good to see you all. Hope you've all had a lovely weekend. I am ready on a Monday morning, sitting down with a delicious cup of coffee until my wee boy threw a car in it, which was awesome. So it's lovely to be seeing you and talking about Shakespeare and Macbeth, because I think you know from last year how much I love Shakespeare and I did it at uni. And we made the decision that you had spent so much time studying Shakespeare last year that it was a real shame you didn't get a chance to have an exam experience on it and we take it forward another year. And the good news about that is you have learned so much about Macbeth already, so much about Shakespeare, and it's just about taking it up a level. And that's what I'm gonna be working on with you today. How to take up your knowledge and skills from that five level Macbeth to higher Macbeth. So think about this essay, because this can be the first critical essay you do in the higher course. Think about this essay just kind of bridging the gap. Don't get too nervous about it or worry about it. Just think about, well, I'm still at a really, really amazing level of Nat 5 and I'm just boosting myself onto higher, okay? So the first thing to do, Macbeth, if you've forgotten the plot, I hope no one has, but it's not unfeasible that you might be a bit rusty. I've put in a wee link there to a respectable but short, comprehensive plot link and you can just go over that if you've forgotten the plot or lost the plot like I have. Just have a quick revision of that and you should still have all of your Macbeth notes from last year too. Plus before you start this essay you should have read the additional BBC notes that I linked in last week on Macbeth. Now studying Macbeth at Nat 5 and studying Macbeth at higher we're obviously going to go into a bit more depth at higher level. And that's why it says here, more sophisticated stuff. We want to be that bit more clever at higher level. And I wanted to talk to you a little today about this idea of the tragic hero. This might have been something we kind of mentioned in passing at Nat 5, but we didn't go into a lot of depth about the tragic hero. At higher, I want you to be solid on this concept. Now, the idea of a tragic hero is actually going right back to the Greeks. And you've probably heard the saying, oh, there's only so, only so many stories in the world. That was true even for Shakespeare. Shakespeare took a lot of his inspiration and some of his stories from Greek sources. And it also took a lot of the templates for his plays and derived ideas for his characters from Greek models. And Tragic Hero is one of those. And thinking about Macbeth as a tragic hero. Now, a tragic hero is, as it says here, a type of character in a tragedy and usually the protagonist. Now, the protagonist is language I want to see at higher. And protagonist, when we go and study Gatsby, you can refer to Gatsby as the protagonist as well, is the person, the main character driving forward the story. So that's the kind of language I want to see at higher the protagonist, and our protagonist is Macbeth. You want to also refer to him as a tragic hero. And as it says here, the idea of the tragic hero derived from the Greeks and specifically Aristotle, a really awesome, famous philosopher. Now, the stuff here, you don't need to quote that in your essay, so don't worry about that. That's just, I want you to know it for background. But words that I've put in bold here, like tragic hero and protagonist, I expect you to have them in your essay. So tragic hero is a flawed hero. A tragic hero is a type of character who has some heroic traits that are in the sympathy of the audience, but also has flaws or makes mistakes that can ultimately lead to their own downfall. And that's very much the case with Macbeth, particularly at the start of the play. In Act One, he has some amazing heroic qualities, battling for his country, defending Scotland, fighting for his lands, and such a respected soldier. But equally, he develops and maybe because of his partner, Lady Macbeth, she exacerbates some of his flaws as well. Macbeth is a tragic hero because a grave error of judgment and his own ambition caused him to murder Duncan. And you might want to say, to be a bit more sophisticated, that Lady Macbeth's willing him on, it's not entirely his decision to murder Duncan, it's also his wife. So that's something you could say in his defence. But nonetheless, ultimately, he has to take the culpability, the fall for murdering Duncan. Because he's his own man, he makes his own decisions, even if he's under the sway of his 
wife. And in this sense, he's a tragic hero. Although he has all these good qualities, he also makes mistakes and his ambition, and remember his ambition is a big theme in the play. We talked about that a bit in Nat 5 and it was in the BBC notes that I linked to you last week as well. This idea of ambition has caused him to murder Duncan and that leads to chaos and destruction, not just for Macbeth, but remember in the natural order of things, how nature, and that's another theme in Macbeth, is set out of order and blood is another what we call light motif that emphasizes just how destructive his actions have been to nature so as i said you want to refer to him as a tragic hero because he has heroic qualities but he makes mistakes ultimately and the bit there is interesting for us and again aristotle very famous greek philosopher According to Aristotle's theory of tragedy, the tragic hero must begin the play as a high status individual. And that's very much true of Macbeth. Remember how respected, noble Macbeth he is at the start of the play. So this ties in completely with the Greek theory that he begins the play as a tragic hero and he falls from grace. Okay, And that way it carries more impact. Excuse the noise, it's my bread maker. So he is very much tying in with the theory of the Greek tragic hero. And that's what I'm saying about elevating your ideas and elevating your language at a higher level and coming to this essay about Macbeth with that informed point of view. So let's think about kicking off the higher critical essay. And first of all, let's recap on our prior learning and think about the essays that we wrote on Macbeth at Nat 5 level. So here's a question that's actually from 2018, and this is one we have done. It was choose a play in which a writer creates an interesting character by referring to appropriate techniques to explain how the writer makes this character interesting. Okay, so interesting character is a very very easy question at nat five all they're asking you to do is here's the character write about him at higher they're looking for a bit more sophistication and focus in your critical essays and the higher critical essay question here is different in the sense it's more specific Choose a play in which a major character experiences different emotions throughout the play. So you'll see this question, it's not entirely different from the Nat 5 drama questions, but it is more specific. They're asking you about different emotions throughout the play. So I think I'm going to go and turn my bread maker off, sorry. Oh, the realities of online teaching, apologies. So different emotions throughout the play, and we are going to pick the character of Macbeth for this question. One thing that does remain the same between Higher and Nat 5 is, do you remember this idea of the magic box, as some of you guys refer to it, which is all the critical terminology. They still want to see that critical terminology at Higher. The essays at Higher and Nat 5 are very, very similar. They're both still marked out of 20 and they're looking for a lot of the same qualities. And I will go through the critical essay marking grid with you in another session, but I don't want to throw too much at you today. But just remember, it's very, very similar to Nat 5, what they're looking for. And one aspect of that is referring to appropriate techniques or what we refer to more colloquially as the magic box. And I think I put this in red here. Yeah, I made you a wee magic box. So that's some familiarity from Nat 5. You still want to have in all of this stuff in a good quality higher essay. So critical terminology such as characterization, key scenes, structure, climax, theme, plot, conflict, setting. And remember, that's not fully comprehensive. That's what the ellipsis is indicating, but it's a suggestion of the critical terminology that you should be using, okay? So keep your red box, keep your special box in mind and try to use critical terminology in your higher essay just the same way you did at Nat 5. Now, I'm going to be nice and take you through a bit of a paragraph plan for how to do this higher essay. Obviously, I'm not going to do this for you every essay, but at the beginning, it's about giving you that apparatus because we're still at the start of the higher course and it's actually really early doors to be doing a higher essay. 
because you study in Macbeth and at five, we're jumping right into our essay and we're only, we're not even in May. Normally you wouldn't start doing higher essays until probably September at least after the holiday. So it's amazing that you can start doing this now. It's gonna be a massive boost to your attainment. Anyway, I also still want to give you some support even though we're online teaching. So just the same way we did at Nat5, I've done you a paragraph plan. So the question we're doing, and remember this is a higher question now, choose a play in which a major character experiences different emotions throughout the play. And again, in the same way at Nat5, you needed to keep referring to the question to get your marks. It's the same deal with higher. You have to focus on this idea of different emotions. So don't go around the houses, don't go too much storytelling. Focus on this narrative of different emotions in Macbeth. And I'm going to talk to you today about some of the different emotions Macbeth feels. Now, this is a suggested paragraph plan. You don't have to stick to it. And it's not completely comprehensive. It's just suggested points and wee snippets of quotes you can use. But you will need to find much longer quotes than what I've suggested in here. I was just giving you um, little hits of inspiration, you might say. But at higher, that's one thing. They'll also be looking for longer quotes than they are at Nat 5. Remember, go back to your character logs and your theme logs that you have got from Nat 5, because you will be able to use them and use them from this essay. So all the work you did at Nat 5 is not wasted. Go right back to those character logs, okay? So the other thing that is far from wasted is the kind of skills and apparatus we learned for how to structure our essays. Now, TART, title, author, refer to task. In the same way at Nat 5, we use TART every single introduction, same deal at higher. You don't get many marks for the introduction, but you want to make a good impression. So you need to include title of the play, author, spelled correctly, reference to task, which is emotions Macbeth feels. And you also, it'd be nice to see some good language or short we quote in the introduction, like noble Macbeth or how he's a tragic hero. That would impress the examiner from the offset. Paragraph two, plot summary. Do we get a lot of marks for a plot summary? No, it has to be there, it has to do the job, it has to show your knowledge of the text, but we want to just get it in there and move right on, okay? Where we start picking up the big marks, the big wins, paragraph three onwards, which is where we start doing our analysis. So do you remember all that macro and micro analysis I talked to you about in that five? You still want to do that here. And you also still want to put in, I better type this up here actually, because I didn't put this in. I'm hoping you know this off by heart, P C. QE because you've got so many notes on that from Nat 5 and I'll maybe repost some of them to the classroom as well. PCQE, you're still using PCQE for every main body of paragraph, okay? So point, context, quotation, evidence. So the point, the main statement you're making in that paragraph and that's always going to be about the emotions Macbeth feels. C is just a quick wee reference to the act and scene, if you can remember. If not, just midway through the play, at the outset of the play, that sort of thing. Quote is your quote. And like I say, at higher, you want to be looking for slightly longer quotes than you did at Nat 5, okay? And E is your evaluation slash analysis. And that's where you pick up the big points, okay? And you want to really show off as a higher candidate. And a way to show off is doing that macro, micro analysis that we talked about a lot at Nat 5. A lot of you were really getting into the hang of that at the end of the Nat 5 course. And you should just bring in the same skill set here. I'll do another separate video lesson on macro to micro analysis a different day. But honestly, so many of you were doing that really well at Nat 5. It's the exact same skills. So let's think more specifically now about this essay and what we're going to write in terms of contents. Emotions Macbeth feels. Now, Macbeth feels a whole host of emotions throughout the play. And he also changes as a character so much throughout the play. And that fits in with that kind of cycle of tragic hero, how he begins as a hero and he loses that path. He loses his way, if you will. Now, you don't have to exactly go with the emotions that I have identified. You can do something a bit different if you want, but these are just suggestions, some emotions he feels. And I put all the emotions in red to remind you of the relevance. 
So paragraph three, I have suggested you write a paragraph on how, at the start of the play, Macbeth feels pride, he feels bravery after defending his country at the opening of the play. And you could use that nice wee short quote, Noble Macbeth. Now I've only put really brief notes in for this. You would need to expand on that a lot higher, but I'm not gonna do everything for you. You know how to do this stuff yourself. So you need to go on a few more details of the battle. Like say, if you've forgotten that, you can look at the plot summary like I posted at the beginning. But how at the start of play, he feels pride, he feels bravery, he's patriotic for his country. That would be some nice language to show in there. Paragraph four. When he's received the prophecies, the first set of prophecies from the witches, he begins to feel excitement or intrigue, perhaps confusion as well, at the prospect of becoming Thane of Cawdor, Thane of Glamis and King thereafter. He's thinking, how can I become all of these titles? So his emotions are going to change there and develop, okay? And those are the sort of emotions you want to show. Now, paragraph four, I have suggested he feels manipulated. And this allows you a chance to talk about Lady Macbeth as well, because although this essay is primarily about Macbeth, you cannot miss out Lady Macbeth. She's a massive part of the play and she's a massive part of Macbeth's emotions and how he feels, okay? Now, remember the other thing is, not every quote you use in this essay needs to be something Macbeth says. It can be something someone says about Macbeth, like the King Duncan quote before, or something someone says to him, such as Macbeth, Lady Macbeth, I beg your pardon. And I don't know if you remember this one here, because you could take a quote either from the letter or the soliloquy, or later on when she says, then screw your courage to the sticking place. And I always love that quote when she's manipulating him and she says, screw your courage to the sticking place. And she's really saying, develop that masculinity. And she's almost man shaming him, I suppose you would call that masculinity shaming him. And he feels manipulated there. Maybe he feels embarrassed that he's not enough of a man for his wife. It's up to you to interpret that and analyze as you wish. And as I said, you'll need to look in that quote in a bit more depth. Paragraph six, I would go on to um, where he's killed King Duncan and he does feel some regret and revulsion at that point. Again, you need to source a quote for that yourself, okay? But remember, at the start of the play, he's still human. He still has human fallibility. He very much doesn't think it's a perfect decision to kill Duncan. It's different from later on in the play where he's saying, he feels invincible and we're going to talk about that in a minute but before we get to that paragraph seven you could talk about how he feels fear which leads him leads him to kill, kill Banquo. He suggests that the kingship is nothing if he's not secure in it and that's what goes on to propel him to kill his earlier friend Banquo or will have murderers killed for him and again you can talk about his emotions are different there. He's feeling fear He's worried that people are going to find out what he's done. And you'll need to look up quotes for that and go into a lot more depth. I'm just giving you kind of quick hit points. Paragraph eight, um, you can talk about the guilt he feels. Remember his hallucinations. You could talk about the banquet scenes. You could talk about um, the prior scene. Is this a dagger I see before me? Anything that shows his guilt and his conscience. And you'll need to look up these quotes and get specific scene references. I've just put in wee snippets to give you some inspiration. Now, after he has um, killed Banquo and the play's moved on a bit, he actually goes on to a different emotion, which is feeling invincible. And by the time he gets to the second set of prophecies where he's told that none of women born shall harm Macbeth, he feels invincible, unstoppable, okay? As we know ourselves, at the end of the play, we learn that Macduff has been delivered by what was the equivalent of a caesarean section back then. So effectively, he's not been born of a woman. But Macbeth himself doesn't know that at that point of the play. So he thinks, well, he's invincible. No one can kill me. So at this part of the play, he now feels invincible. And the other quote that I love, and again, you could expand upon that, which shows his sense of invincibility, how he feels invincible is, I have almost forgotten the taste of fears. 
okay? I think it's actually always forgotten the taste of my fears that I should say there. But he's forgotten what it's like to be afraid of something, okay? Paragraph 10, he begins to feel regret and disillusionment. When Lady Macbeth dies, his wife dies, and the couple are very distant by that point in the play, their earlier closeness is completely gone. He's lost that affection, he's lost that solidarity. Now, this is a great quote that you cannot miss out. And again, I've just put a wee snippet of it here, but go back and look at it in more depth. And it says, life's but a walking shadow, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And you could do some amazing microanalysis on that, the idea of shadow. You could talk about how that word choice suggests Macbeth himself is a shadow. You could talk about sound and fury, that fury, that anger. He feels anger at the end too. An amazing amount in that quote. And as I say, these are just suggested quotes and snippets of quotes. You will need to go away like good higher candidates and really draw out the detail and at greater length as well. Paragraph 11, we do what we always do, which is slow. And you remember that is just a really quick way to um, kind of bang out your conclusion. Slow stands for sum up, link back, overall statement on the text, okay? And remember, don't save anything that amazing till your conclusion. If your um, point is that great, put it earlier on in your essay, okay? Conclusions are just there to basically say bye-bye to the examiner and sum up what you have said. So sum up your main points, link back to the question. So link back to the emotions the character feels, showing the examiner that you are still relevant to your question in every single paragraph. And then make an overall statement on the text. And I would suggest something quite generic that you can use in most essays for this bit. And a lot of the time you cannot write generic comments in a higher essay, but this O is one of the few points where you can. So you could say something deep and profound like Macbeth, the Scottish play, ultimately portrays a tragic hero whose life is ended by sound and fury signifying nothing. The characters fall from grandeur depicts Aristotle's classic Greek model of a tragic hero. Something like that. That was just literally off the top of my head. Probably you guys will be able to write something far, far better. So I hope this uh, vlog helped. As I say, this is just a suggested plan. It's not fully comprehensive and the quotes that I have picked out are quite short. You'll need to go and source them in more detail, but I don't want to do everything for you because you are good higher candidates. What I would recommend before starting the essays, go back to the Nat 5 essays you have written on interesting character. Some of those points you will be able to help influence this essay. Remember though that you must refer to the question in every single paragraph. You are going to have just over a week to do this essay and I will be available by email as always. So lots of luck, any questions, just drop me an email at any time. I'll try and get back to you within 24 hours and I'll speak to you soon, bye.